Hello, this is Vol from Ride, and you're watching Stormbringer, the Austrian heavy sign. This uh, tour is a very special tour for Raid. Um, can you describe me a bit of, of the concept? Because you are playing material of three bands, mm. Windir, Raid and um, Ultus. Mm. Um, is it just for, this, uh, for the celebration of the 20 years Jubilee or is, it just, uh, is there more behind it? Well, we, we started thinking about this when we did the last tour. We were thinking, okay, we've done Ride for 10 years now, and uh, it's 20 years since the Winder and Urku started. So we just were sitting in the tour bus, having a couple of beers, and uh, the idea came up, maybe we should do some shows with this. And uh, we, everyone was into the idea, so we wanted to kind of uh, do a show that represented all our albums and all our different bands and, uh, as much as possible. And uh, we started uh, with the idea to do some festivals. Uh, and we did the festivals and we enjoyed it and we also decided we want to do a tour with these shows. And um, how can we imagine this? Can you describe uh, the thing for people who can't attend the concerts, maybe? How is the show going on? Right. With the, how much material do we play from each band? Things like that. Uh, depends. Uh, we vary a bit from night to night, but uh, we do uh, try to cover all our albums as much as possible with Vindir and Bride and Ulkus as well. So uh, it's pretty much 40-40 uh, uh, Bride Vindir percent, and uh, then it's 20% uh, percent Ulkus. We divide the set in into so we uh, tonight we're gonna start with a winder part then we go into doing a longer variety session over to an Ulku song and uh, end the set with some winder and variety songs mixed again so it uh, we keep it a bit blended and mixed it up a bit uh, you know so and uh, do it from uh, some old songs mix mixed with some new songs so yeah and try to also change the set list a bit from night to night And do you have um, Valfar's brother this time with you as well? Yes, that's correct. He's, uh, he did, when we did a first memory concert for Valfar uh, right after his death, then uh, he did vocals for the first time in his life. And uh, he's not usually a musician, uh, and he doesn't work with the band outside that, but uh, he's been, uh, he and Valfar and me were very close. We were living 50 meters from each other growing up, and he was the guy that kind of brought music and uh, got our uh, attention to metal in the first place. So uh, for him it's very special and emotional to go out and do uh, his brother's songs in this way. So, uh, and for us also it's a very, very unique feeling and uh, you can see his passion on stage, so it means a lot for us. Of course it's better to have a relative in the band than some, somebody from somewhere else. Yeah, we wouldn't have done these shows, uh, just to rent a guy and do the songs, yeah. the vocals, that don't make no sense. But this is something uh, Vegar wants to do and it's something we want to do, so mm -hmm. it's a common thing like that. So, uh, when we were talking of Valfar, um, without his death, which was very tragic back then, 10 years ago, um, would there be a band? Would we be sitting here right now when this didn't happen? Or would you be in some other band? Uh, impossible to say. I'm pretty sure Winder would have continued. Uh, we were uh, on the brink of making our fifth album and started writing songs, but I also actually booked the studio. So I'm pretty sure Winder would have continued and uh, I think we would have been Winder today as well. Maybe we had done other projects as well, you know, you never know what happens, but uh, we had no plans to stop Winder when the things happen. Okay. On the contrary, we were ready to work a lot with Winder, so uh, who knows. So, but it's uh, 10 years uh, celebration of, of Riot now as well, so um, you know, that's, that's quite something. Yeah, it's been a great ride. Uh, ever since we started the ride, we just keep writing music all the time, and we have re released now uh, <coughs> six albums and uh, done a lot of shows and touring. So it's been a ride all the time. Actually, this now we kind of had a year more or less off before we did these shows, and that's the first time we kind of had a like a break with the band. So. Uh, Now uh, we're gonna end this tour and then uh, we're gonna stop all the uh, live playing until we have the new album ready. So if it takes two months or two years, I have no idea yet, but uh, we won't do any more shows before the album is ready.
but it will be next year some in the course of next year somewhere hopefully hopefully it will be in uh, in the autumn that's the plan you know release it in autumn but we're you know, we're going to take the time that we need and we're not going to push anything so maybe it takes a couple of months maybe it takes a couple of years who knows <laughs> but autumn is a good time for a great album to to be released i guess yeah it should be fine and uh then we can have the summer off and be ready to tour again so <laughs> So um, I have the impression you always come to Vienna with uh, great expectations or something like that. Uh, what what is uh, the best memories you have of playing in Vienna or in Austria? In common. We were, it's been good every time we played, especially the last couple of shows we've done here. And uh, we played at Escape Metal Corner and uh, people are really ded dedicated here. You can see they know the songs well and they, they come to see us, especially not just drop in at the metal show. So. We always feel that Vienna could be one of the best shows on a tour, uh, with a lot of dedication from people here. Other cities like Paris and London, of course, are always fantastic, but Vienna is, uh, really has become a very important and strong uh, city for us to play. But you come down from Poland, I guess, and Poland is always a very intense audience, so it's hard for us tonight, I yeah, guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Poland was great yesterday. They are very loyal, very loyal fans, yeah. extremely into the music yeah. and uh, special atmosphere. But that goes for Vienna as well. It usually is a good place. Tonight is a Monday night. I don't know how that affects people. You know, it's work day. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I can't predict this. Uh, it's just It just surprises me from time to time yeah. how much people come out on a Monday night. Yeah. But... Um, You wrote on the Facebook page that uh, you hope that Ernst Vittori and, and Rex are coming to the concert. Uh, now Ernst Vittori, for the people who don't know, is a, a ski jumper, an uh, ex-ski jumper of, from Austria. And you mean the dog Rex? <laughs> yes. From, from, from the series? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the series. Really? Is, is, is the series uh, running in, in Norway yeah, as well? Yeah, it is running in Norway and he's a huge star in Norway. That's really? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> it's like a kind of a cult series. It's our drummer. Our drummer and... Uh, Uh, Grutla from Enslaved are big fans of uh, Rex and uh, Kommissar Mozart. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, in fact, there were, during the series, there were like 10 dogs yeah, yeah, which but played. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. So uh, it's more the icon of Rex yeah. than the dog itself, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So you needed the, the last yeah. Rex here. Yeah, yeah. And why, why the ski jumper? Why Ernst uh, Vittori? Ski jumping. ski jumping is big in Norway. And when I grew up, I remember uh, especially Ernst Vittori and Andreas Felder. The two yeah. big... Uh, They were the best ski jumpers at the time, and uh, we follow ski jumping a lot, so they were kind of like icons when we grew up. I remember Espen Bredesen? Yeah, Bredesen? Yeah, that's yeah, correct, yeah. 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 So one name I remember yeah. from. <laughs> so we have a great interest in that, so that's kind of like a fun thing to just... Uh, and Austria has always been uh, very good at ski jumping, so you know, it's like Norway, Austria, Finland, Germany, those countries, so uh, yeah. <laughs> you did a very um, interesting thing, you were in India recently. I think it was a year ago, was it? Yeah, a couple of years ago. Two years. A couple of years ago. Uh, two years, okay. Um, and you did some performances with Indian dancers. How came this uh, to happening, this idea? Uh, we were contacted by uh, the producer of that performance and she wanted to work with a Norwegian uh, black metal or extreme metal band. And she were, uh, had to get, get a tip of the ride and asked if we were interested. And uh, at the beginning it felt kind of strange, you know, didn't really think that would actually come through and stuff like that but, but it developed and we worked together uh, in advance a bit and uh, went over to India and did a week of rehearsals and did four shows there so it was very interesting completely different from what we've done before um, in a sense we we basically did what we usually do we didn't change our music or anything like that so we performed as it would have been varied uh, shows in that way but they adapted their Indian music to our music and I uh, also set up dancers and stuff like that so it was a very <laughs> strange performance in many ways but interesting I just, I just uh, imagine like you on the stage and like some Bollywood dancers in the yeah. background <laughs> yeah. well, not quite like that but it, uh, yeah, it was a very strange concept it was but I enjoyed it and uh, it was a challenge to do something you know out of your comfort zone and uh, safety and uh, you don't really didn't know what to expect how they would end in the Uh, so uh, I think was, uh, we learned a lot from that experience. Yeah, it sounds very interesting. Um, but I know it happened that the writing of uh, Welcome Farewell happened at the same time you did this tour. Do you think uh, this had some kind of impact on the album? 
like maybe unconsciously yeah i would have been unconsciously then i don't think so no no <clears throat> i never thought about it like that and, and uh, of course you get impressions when you travel and stuff like that but uh, i don't see any link between uh, that tour and uh, the album no. but it's your latest album welcome farewell um is there a special meaning behind this title because it's a very these are two words which are either connected or not it's just the opposite of each other or something like that what, what does it mean for you for me it's uh, got many meanings and uh, I prefer to let keep it to me, for myself uh, I've put my words out there and I let uh, the listeners find their own meaning in it uh, for me it was an album that's quite personal uh, we usually are based more on histo historical themes on our albums and this time it It's more like a uh, personal thoughts coming out there. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I like to write the words, not tell about them. <laughs> which, which are you in, in these 20 years of career you had and with with the several bands? Which are your best memories and your worst memories <laughs> of all, uh, both personal and as a musician? Ooh, let's start. The, my best memories is the actually the creative process uh, when I've. We are in studio and uh, ending an album. Uh, that's always the best feeling for me. That's uh, that's the reason why I do this uh, in the start of it. So uh, I had a fantastic feeling when I uh, finished Welcome for Well, and I remember also when uh, we did the Leakfad album with uh, Winder. It was a uh, str very strong feeling when I was the album was finished. So of course it's touring, uh, doing shows. Always a lot appreciated doing uh, when we play in the big stages at Wacken and stuff like that. It's a special feeling, you know something unique, something you dreamt of as a child to do this big show. But now it's been over a year since we did club, club shows and it felt great yesterday to be back at a small sweaty club. That's, that's what we actually like best. It's quite, quite a big step yeah. because the connection to the, to, the, to the audience is quite strong in yeah. the smaller clubs. Yeah, yeah the, the festivals, I, I think it's unique and I like it in a way, but it's also so distanced from the audience. So I like it when the audience are all up on stage more or less you know and get it it's easier to get a special atmosphere that way so everybody's sweating yeah. water's dripping down from them from exactly. <laughs> that's what it's all about you know <laughs> um so um i i know that you don't want to be labeled as some kind of musical style um but you incorporated many many styles in your music over the over the years it started like with many folk elements and maybe black metal elements in the beginning yeah. and Nowadays there are many many retro rock and occult rock and 70s rock things in there. Was this a process uh, that just happened over the years? Or is it just the influence from, from, from the other music around? Yeah, it is. I don't uh, reflect too much as that I'm now gonna, this time I'm gonna incorporate these elements or do it like this. I just write music and uh, I listen to a lot of different kind of music and I get inspired by that. So we put no limitation on how our album or song is going to end up so we just start writing and uh, then just go with the flow uh, there so uh, and the result is what it is you know we like to uh, explore with different kinds of genres and bring it into our metal setting mm. and uh, do you think in uh, 10 years we were sitting here as well and then celebrating 20 years of right <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, in this bus here at the same club yeah who knows people, yeah. people as well I don't know <laughs> I hope so, uh, but we don't think. I don't think I had like that anymore. I, it's like Makes no I, sense. No, I, guess. I, I take uh, one album and one tour at a time, and then you see and enjoy it at the moment. Before I was more into kind of looking for how things are going in the future, but now I don't just do a show one day and then you see. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, last question to you: Do you think uh, Valfar's spirit is still in the music that's been I created think today? His spirit is in this bus right now. That's what I thought. So, uh, yeah, his spirit is always with us. Okay, there's nothing left to say, I guess. So, thank you, and uh, maybe there's something you want to send out to the Stormbringer viewers? Uh, well, what can I say? <laughs> Come to the show, but it's too late, it's already been done. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. <laughs>